So guys, in this video, let us look at cervical biopsy. So what do you exactly do you mean by biopsy? Biopsy is you're taking a sample of tissue, right? So that is biopsy from the cervix. So what is cervix then? So cervix is this part of um, a part which is between the uterus and the vagina, isn't it? So here you have the uterus, right? And here you have the vagina. Between these two, you have the cervix. It's a cylinder shaped neck of tissue that connects the vagina and uterus okay now we want a biopsy of this tissue right we want a biopsy of the cervical tissue why because cervix um, uh, the cervical carcinoma is so common that uh, they want a biopsy to assess right so just understand that inside endocervix will have columnar epithelium and ectocervix which is outside it will have squamous epithelium okay in between these two you have a transformation zone it is this it is the junction okay between the squamous epithelium and the columnar epithelium so basically what ha what they are saying is this columnar cells are constantly becoming squamous right in this transformation zone okay this is our transitional zone so this is the most common place for abnormal cells to develop so basically this is a very common diagnostic procedure which one which is a common diagnostic procedure guys cervical biopsy it's a very common diagnostic procedure okay it's diagnostic procedure and it is carried out very commonly so basically we are talking about the types of cervical biopsy here the main uh, intent of this video is to talk about the types you have the surface cervical biopsy punch biopsy then you have wedge ring and cone okay so surface punch wedge ring cone okay so let us look at this uh, punch biopsy it is done in outpatient procedure without anesthesia they are basically using some cuscose bival bivalve speculum okay look at this uh, photo here small tissue is taken from the cervix okay so they are using some bivalve speculum the biopsy is taken from the suspected area or a four quadrant using punch biopsy forceps so they are taking from the suspected area or from all the four quadrants isn't it from a four quadrant using punch biopsy forceps they have a punch biopsy forceps what else did they say cuscose bivalve speculum they are using a speculum to open it up isn't it speculum is for that so here you have the cuscose speculum okay i think they have shown that in this photo isn't it how to use it some kind of speculum has been put in right to keep it apart and then they have put the this is i'm more like a pap smear kind of a thing they have put this thing to get a tissue sample so in punch biopsy what will you use this cuscose speculum right cuscose bivalve speculum and uh, you will use what forceps punch biopsy forceps the forceps name is nothing but punch biopsy forceps itself okay cuscose bivalve speculum these are specific words that you will have to write then alternatively the biopsy may be taken from unstained area when the cervix is painted with schiller's iodine or colposcopic directed so basically when you stain it and all that whichever is unstained from that part they are taking the biopsy alternate hemostasis is usually achieved by pressure with a gauze piece so that means to say that once they do this to stop the bleeding they may uh, put pressure with a gauze piece so achieve he hemostasis okay to stop the bleeding something like that so we are done with punch now let us move to wedge biopsy so guys what are we looking at today today we are looking at cervical biopsy the types right so the options available surface punch wedge ring cone so punch we just now saw you will use this cuscose speculum uh, cuscose bivalve speculum and punch biopsy um, forceps right now we will move to wedge okay so wedge biopsy is done with definitive growth when definitive growth is visible so you have seen definite growth it is visible oh my god so the growth is actually visible here right necrotic area should be avoided an area near the edge is the ideal site so i'm thinking that if this is the cervix 
and there is a definite growth, the edge is the ideal site, right, to take the biopsy. The necrotic area you will actually avoid, okay, that's what it looks like. Some other points here, posterior vaginal speculum is introduced. These are the steps, isn't it? Posterior vaginal speculum is introduced. Yes, uh, focus here if you are uh, sleeping. Anterior and posterior lip of cervix is to be held by Ali's forcep. Then with a scalpel, a wedge of tissue is cut from the edge of the lesion, including adjacent healthy tissue for comparative histological study. So some uh, with this uh, problematic tissue, they are also trying to take a small piece of healthy tissue also to compare. Okay. Then how will you achieve hemostasis in this? By gauze packing or by sutures. So sutures, okay, they will plan to suture it also to achieve hemostasis. So either by gauze packing or sutures. So basically, so basically this is wedge biopsy, definite growth if it is there, then what they will do? They will avoid the necrotic area, but from the edge they will try to pick up the tissue sample. They will use, have to always use a speculum. So, posterior vaginal speculum, they are talking about a posterior vaginal speculum. Then anterior and posterior lip of cervix is to be, is to be held by Ali's forcep. So, here you have the Ali's forcep. Okay. You will hold it. With a scalpel, a wedge of tissue is cut. So, how are they taking the tissue here with a scalpel? Okay. So, Ali's forcep, you are just using to hold the anterior or posterior lip of the cervix. So, these are all the tools, a speculum you need, Ali's forcep, but actual wedge of tissue is cut. How? With the help of a scalpel. You know what a scalpel is, right? Definitely you know, because you have already used all this in dissection. Okay. Then, you will take slight uh, adjacent tissue also for healthy tissue for comparison. Hemostasis, you will have see same thing, pressure by gauze piece or here you can also use sutures because you are using a scalpel so sutures can be necessary so what are we done with now so guys where are we we have looked at uh, in cervical biopsy the types so surface not much explained then you have punch biopsy then you have wedge next we have to move on to what ring and lastly cone biopsy right okay let's move on so ring biopsy of what of the cervix whole of the squamo columnar area of the cervix is excised with a special knife so, they are talking about some special knife here and they are seem to be talking about whole of the squamocolumnar area. The tissue is subjected to serial section, okay, to detect CIN or early invasive carcinoma. This, this is almost replaced by directed biopsy either Schiller or colposcopy. So, this is not done anymore. That is what we have understood. It is almost replaced. This technique they are not using. So, it is replaced now. So, basically here they were taking the entire squamocolumnar area. The tissue they were uh, checking for what? They can detect CIN or early invasive carcinoma. Invasive is bad, isn't it? What is CIN? Cervical intraepithelial neoplasm. So, this is what the entire discussion is about, isn't it? So, here you have the normal squamous, here they are showing you CIN 1, 2, 3, till here they did not call it invasive and then it became, the, then it became invasive. Guys, let us look at what the Schiller's test is, okay. So, basically it is Schiller's iodine test, etc. When the iodine solution is applied to cervix, you can um, diagnose cervical cancer, okay. So, it is applied to cervix under direct vision. Normal cervical mucosa um, stains brown. Abnormal areas, they do not take up the stain. See, that is the main thing. That is why even in biopsy, they were telling that if it is not taking up stain, you should uh, do the biopsy of that area because abnormal tissue does not take up the stain. The other thing they are saying which has replaced all this technology now is colposcopy. Let us look at that also here. So basically colposcopy, what are they saying? Via microscope, right? They are trying to visualize a colposcope they are using. Okay, so you want to examine the cervix, vagina and vulva for signs of disease, right? So you will use a special instrument called colposcope. 
So our intention was to do what to learn ring biopsy. So ring biopsy, you'll use one special knife and cut off whatever you want and check. Okay. Now it is not used. <clears throat> Next, lastly, we are going to cone biopsy. Coneization. This is an important thing that you should know. So basically, cone biopsy. What they are doing, you can see here. Cone. They are cutting out a cone, right? Coneization. So let's look at this. This is uh, has a lot of uh, information. The operation involves removal removal of cone of cervix. So you will include the entire squamocolumnar junction, stroma with glands and endocervical mucous membrane. When do you actually do a cone biopsy? When uh, uh, as a diagnostic thing you will do, right? That you want to diagnose what type of uh, neoplasm it is. Or in case you want to remove it because you want to cure the person, that is also possible. So therapeutic purpose in CIN, okay? So, cases of CIN suitable, which are suitable. So, the indications of diagnostic colonization, they are telling here, if a colposcope is available and why would you do it even if a colposcope is available? And if colposcope is not available, then why will you do it if there is an abnormal pap smear, right? And uh, with healthy cervix, positive diagnosis of CIS to exclusive invasive. You want to make sure that it is not invasive. Biopsy report is inconsistent with cytological findings. So basically something is not clear. You are not sure. Okay, That is when you are using it. Here also they are telling the same thing. Unsatisfactory colposcopic findings. Inconsistent findings. Biopsy cannot rule out invasive cancer. Okay, Just look at all the details of this. We, we are not giving you the entire details here. Next moving on. Procedure, how will you use, how will you do? Cold knife, cold knife cone. Okay, there's something called as a cold knife cone. But currently they are using CO2 laser, carbon dioxide laser under, uh, which is used as a scalpel. So they are using laser to cut it off. Okay. But they will use a colposcope for guidance. Okay. So look at this. So they are, this is a cold knife, isn't it? Cold cone biopsy. So cold knife cone. But now, now what are they preferring? Laser. So always there will be something better. So let us look at the laser part of it. So advantages of laser over cold knife coneization. Guys, are you focusing? How is it going? Are you able to focus and understand what are we actually looking at? We are looking at cone biopsy, conization. Okay. So, here they are talking about laser. Okay. Over cold knife. So, we are talking about laser. So, laser always is less tissue damage, less blood loss. Right. You can do it as outpatient under local anesthesia. Post-operative pain will be less. Discharge um, from uh, this part will be less. Regeneration, regeneration of epithelium will occur early. So, you can almost... Um, uh, all types of CIN can be treated. So, they are tre they're talking about treatment here. Fertility and pregnancy outcomes are not affected adversely. So, that is good, right? For people who want to have a family. So, does this make sense? So, finally, we reached a stage where combining kind of the uh, diagnostic with therapeutic, right? So, now they are talking about treatment also. Let's move on. Cold knife. They are talking about cold knife. Principal steps. If you want to know the steps of the cold knife, just look at this and understand the um, general anesthesia, a lot of pre-sutures, margin suture, then um, uh, routine endocervical curette, <coughs> hemostatic sutures. You should not give stummed dwarf hemostatic suture. Okay. Finally, here they are telling that you will take the tissue and send it for histological examination, right? And if the margins of the cone are involved in neoplasia, very important here, hysterectomy should be seriously considered within 48 hours. Wow. Or at a later date, 6 weeks to avoid infection. So either within 48 hours or 6 weeks, at 6 weeks, isn't it? So within 48 hours, this person may have to undergo hysterectomy. Interesting. Now, let's move on to the complications of this cone biopsy. There can be secondary hemorrhage. You will write almost for everything, right? Hemorrhage. Then cervical stenosis, which can lead to hematometra. That is blood in uterus, isn't it? 
that is collection or retention of blood in the uterus and infertility the person can become infertile diminished cervical mucus cervical incompetence leading to recurrent miscarriage so that would be another thing for infertility or what mid trimester abortion or preterm labor so almost these things are all like related to pregnancy isn't it infertility miscarriage infertility miscarriage mid trimester abortion preterm labor right all this well so how is it going now so we have finished in this video we have looked at cervical biopsy right basically we understood what biopsy is what cervix is where exactly the problem starts because of the squamocolumnar transformation zone so basically to detect neoplasms they have so many types and not just to detect diagnose nowadays even as a therapeutic thing they are doing this removing uh, uh, some portion of the cervix isn't it surface biopsy you have punch biopsy wedge biopsy ring and cone a ring they said is now replaced right so they are not using this that's what they told for that then punch biopsy cuscos bivalve speculum punch biopsy forceps wedge biopsy we saw if definite growth is visible you will use some speculum and then alley's forceps then a scalpel you will use and remove this thing in a wedge shape guys nice focus here we are looking at then ring biopsy a special knife is used this is anyways replace this method now basically here we also looked at the stages of um, cervical carcinoma here you saw normal cin1 cin2 cin3 then it became invasive invasive will be very bad right so we talked about the cone uh, biopsy this is important coneization right so here we spoke about two things using a cold knife or laser laser is carbon dioxide laser isn't it so they also told you the advantages of laser this is a very typical standard advantage of laser wherever you will write then procedure of uh, the steps the steps in cold knife procedure we have seen complications hemorrhage hematometra then infertility miscarriage abortion preterm labor diminished cervical mucus mucus okay so that's all for now we have seen in uh, cervical biopsy guys hope you have learned something from this video bye bye